learning outcome after studying this module you shall be able to know about the history of firearm learn about the primitive and modern firearm introduction according to indian arms act a firearm means an arm of any description designed or adapted to discharge a projectiles of any kind by the action of an explosive or other forms of energy including artillery hand grenade riot pistol or weapons of any kind designed or adopted for discharge of any noxious liquid gas or alike firearm have been frequently used in the past and are continuously getting improved in their efficiency and working the evidence provided by firearm is accepted in court is decisive permanent and demonstrative one of the most important items in the permanence of a firearm is gunpowder whose use in the past is detailed below the field of forensic firearm identification sometimes called ballistic is at at its heart the ability of a firearm examiner to determine if a particular bullet or a cartridge case has was fired from a specific firearm the determination can be made thanks to small often microscopic markings on the bullets or cartridge cases that are unique to uh, ammunition fired from the firearm although the examiner cannot determine who actually fired a weapon matching the ammunition to a weapon provides vital facts for the investigation the firearm was originally invented in china during the 13th century after the chinese invented gunpowder during the 9th century these inventions were later transmitted to middle east africa and europe the world's first firearm in history was the fire lens the prototype of the gun the fire lens was invented in china during 10th century and it is the predecessor of all firearm so far india is concerned a stanza appears in arthava russia about the existence of a mixture consisting of charcoal sulfur and other materials providing fire powder this is testimony to the fact that indians were familiar with gunpowder even in ancient times indians used gunpowder much before the chinese as was reported by the hindustan times dated october 7 1980 sukranti our contemporaneous with manu samriti which is assigned by many scholars as a work of second century prescribes guns and projectiles as the standard equipment of a king's war niti shastra describes an account of smoke balls containing gunpowder among the weapons to be used against the enemy vaishampayan who is also credited with the authorship of yadurveda wrote this book it is believed that by scholars to have been composed between 1000 to 800 bc oprich ji mentions that gunpowder is known as sanskriti literature as agni churma or fire powder and the expression nalikam in the text refers to the guns made out of bamboo pipes in ancient india he further adds that they even made elephants of clay which could be exploded from a distance through a fuse to destroy an invading army alexander as well as the mirians had faced such devices in india Chinese had invented gunpowder in the 9th century and firearms in 14th century. These inventions were later transmitted to the Middle East and Europe. Next we will learn about the primitive weapons 
First one is Roman candle tube. The first to use gunpowder to throw objects without any intention of hurting or injuring through penetration but for the sake of fun was made by Romans and the device was known as Roman candle tube. This device consists of a hollow tube made from wood or bamboo. The tube was located from muzzle and with alternate charge of powder. Roman candle tubes were secured with heap in loaded condition. Balls were ignited through the muzzle and as the fire spread around each ball, a certain quantity of gas was produced which developed a pressure enough to launch the balls ahead. In order to provide the strength to hollow tube, the outer surface used to be secured by wrapping the height hip strong thread or metallic wires. There was a gradual improvement and development of different locks such as the match lock, the wheel lock, the flint lock. But the use of these systems came to an end when a comparatively better system came into existence which may be called as the muzzle loading guns and is further described. On pressing the trigger, a hammer would fall on the pallet with enough force to make it ignite. The flame so produced could ignite the powder charge inside the barrel through the touch hole. The paper pallet soon gave way to the percussion caps where the composition was housed in the metallic cups. The percussion cap separately or in complete round formed an important part of ammunition. Next we will learn about the percussion system. The advent of percussion caps lead to the modification of the firearm also. Instead of touch hole, it was screwed on the barrel. The percussion cap was struck by usual trigger. The hammer combination gave flame, which lightened the powder charge in the barrel. This action differs from the present day muzzle loader only in respect of the paper initiation pallet. On pressing the trigger, the hammer falls on the pallet. The pallet gave out a flame, which puts the powder inside the barrel on a fire. In the present day, muzzle loading gun, a metallic percussion cap is placed. It may be noted that a muzzle loading firearm has a barrel closed at the stock end and open at muzzle end. The barrels are fixed to action and stock. The powder and projectile charge is loaded through the muzzle end and is ramped into the position to a compact mass with a ram rod, which is kept handy, attached to the barrel. Next is faster loading system. The biggest development was in respect of speed of loading. The European type of weapons of this period required bullets to be loaded as projectiles into the barrel with wallet and then punched down on the top of the charge with ramrod. The Pennsylvanian gun makers introduced the idea of wrapping the bullets in linen or buckskin patches which had been soaked in 12. This system permitted easier and faster loading and at the same time provided a degree of gas check. This device gave a great degree of accuracy and longer range. Next is modern weapons. The sport activity of Romans resulted in the manufacture of muzzle loading guns and later on breech loading weapons in which a cartridge is loaded to the breech end of the barrel. This was followed by the development of rifled arms with which even distant target could be aimed at precisely. With automatic weapons, it is now possible to fire up to 10 cartridges in one second. The modern weapons, which can be easily handled, carried and operated by a single person, are called small arms. They include handguns, namely pistols and revolvers, which are fired with one hand. 
Shoulder firearms are fired from shoulders and include shotguns, rifles and muskets and other firearms namely machine and submachine guns. The latter are automatic and fire a large number of rounds in a short time. The firearms which are commonly met with such crime situation in India are shotguns and rifles and revolvers, submachine guns and machine guns, muzzle loaders and improvised firearms. The most commonly used weapons are the 12 bore shotgun and improvised firearms. 12 bore shotguns and improvised firearms are mostly smooth bore weapons. Paradox shotguns, unlike to these, are that to have a small portion at the end of their barrel rifled. Shotguns have different bows, example, 8 bow, 12 bow, and 16 bow. If the diameter of the bore of a shotgun is equal to the diameter of a spherical pure lead ball weighing one twelfth of a pound, the gun is called as 12 bore gun. Similarly, if a pure lead ball equals in diameter to the diameter of the shotguns weighs one eighth of a pound, the shotgun will be called as a 8 bore shotgun. Now we will learn about the differences between shotgun and rifle. Handguns and rifles have rifle barrels, meaning that there are grooves cut lengthwise inside the barrel. The groove causes bullet to spin, which make it shoot out straighter and travel faster. Most shotguns are not rifled inside with a standard ammo like lead or steel shot or rifle barrel would cause the pieces of shot to bunch up into a tighter pattern which would defeat the purpose of using a shotgun. Next is difference between a revolver and a pistol. A revolver is a multi-shot firearm, usually a handgun in which the rounds are held in a revolving cylinder that rotates to fire them through a single barrel. The pistols are smaller, lighter and easier to conceal, faster to bring to bear, and sometimes may have more safety features than other firearms. Generally, being an emergency self-defense weapon for use under 25 meters, a handgun bullet neither has the energy of nor the accuracy of a bullet shot from a rifle. Next is improvised firearms. The improvised firearms are also known as country-made firearms, home-made firearms and pipe guns. These firearms are made by no specification by the ordinary blacksmith. These weapons have a short lifespan and most of them are extremely dangerous. There is considerable demand for these weapons, especially in the border states. The trade in improvised firearm is being promoted by the fact that cost of handguns very high and normal criminals cannot afford to buy them through legal means. An improvised firearm is a firearm manufactured other than by a firearms manufacturer or a gunsmith and it is typically constructed by adapting existing materials to the purpose. They range in quality from crude weapons that are as much as dangerous to the user as the target to high quality arms produced by cottage industries using salvaged and repurposed materials. Improvised firearms are commonly used as tools by criminals and others most associated with such groups. Musket has a diameter equal to 0 0.410 inches. When the diameter is less than half an inch, it is expressed in thousands of an inch. Next is its construction. 
the initial part of any improvised firearm is the barrel and the chamber for small low pressure cartridges like the common 0.22 caliber rim firearm cartridges even very thin wall tubing will suffice author harlan ellison describes the zip guns used by gangs in 1950s new york city as being made from tubing used in coffee precolator or automobile radio antennas strapped to block of a wood to serve as a handle the rubber band provides the power for firing pin which is pulled back and released to fire the use of such weak tubing results in a firearm that can be dangerous to the shooter as the target the poorly fitting smooth bow barrel provides little accuracy and is liable to burst upon firing next we will learn about the types of barrel first one is choked barrel in firearms a choke is strapped construction of a shotgun barrel's bore at the muzzle end chokes are almost always used with modern hunting and target shotguns to improve performance their purpose is to shape the spread of shot in order to gain better range and accuracy chokes are variously implemented as either screw in replaceable chokes selectable for particular applications or as fixed non replaceable chokes integral to the shotgun barrel william willingston grinnell is widely credited as being the inventor of the first practical choke as documented in his classic 1888 publication the gun and its development chokes may be formed at the time of manufacturer either as a part of the barrel by squeezing the end of the bow down over a madril or by threading the barrel and screwing in an interchangeable choke tube chokes may also be formed even after a barrel is manufactured by increasing the diameter of a bore inside a chamber creating what is known as jug choke or by installing screw in the chokes within a barrel however implemented a choke typically consists of a conical section that smoothly tapers from the bore diameter down to the choke diameter followed by a cylindrical section of the choke diameter barrelly manufacturing one maker of interchangeable shotgun chokes uses a conical portion about 3 times the bore diameter in the length so that the shot is gradually squeezed down with the minimum deformation the cylindrical section is shorter usually 0.6 to 0.75 inches the use of interchangeable chokes allows tuning the performance of a given combination of shotgun and short shell to achieve a desired level of performance to increase the effective range of a shotgun by increasing concentration of pellets per unit or area the target the barrel of a shotguns are choked at the end of the barrel by reducing its diameter at the muzzle end when the diameter of a barrel of a shotgun is seen throughout the barrel bore it is known to be a true cylinder the choke is full half or quarter or improvised cylinder if the diameter at the muzzle end is reduced by 1 half 1 quarter and about 1/10 of a millimeter respectively next is rifle barrel pistols revolvers sporting rifles and machine guns are important firearms of this class rifling is an important feature in the development in firearms because rifling gives gyro rotatory motion which continues even when the bullet comes out of the muzzle of the firearm the gyro rotatory motion stabilizes the bullet flight 
nose of the bullet is kept in nose on position it also reduces the air resistance aim at the target improves the rifle barrel consists of a number of raised portion and depressions called lines and grooves respectively the distance between two opposite lines is called caliber of the weapon that is 9 mm pistol 0.38 revolver etc development of different types of bullets semi automatic and fully automatic weapons and modification of gun powders are continuing and is an unending process for further improvement in this direction however the modern firearm uses 12 bore shotguns and signal pistols and smooth bore rifling weapons revolvers and pistols example glock type and smith and wesson type revolvers and 9 mm mauser pistols 0.303 rifles semi automatic and automatic firearms carbines or sub machine guns light machine guns machine guns some other automatic guns namely ak47 and its newer version ak56 were introduced during the middle of last century next we will learn about the freak firearm some firearms give innocent appearance of a pen walking stick or an umbrella but can fire standard ammunition with an effective range of about 25 meters toy firearms look like factory made standard firearms but cannot fire any cartridges next is firearm evidence that may be found the range of evidence in firearms related cases can be as small as a piece of bullet fragment which has rifling marks or as large as hundreds of bullets and cartridges cases and numerous firearms even from all samples information can be developed to indicate the type of firearm used and possibly identify the actual firearm that was used other firearms evidence that could be found at shooting scene includes shot shell wads and shot pellets this can indicate the gauge of shotgun the wads and pellets can be gathered and preserved in the same manner as the bullet and cartridge cases by examining wadding materials the examiner may be able to determine the gauge of shotgun the manufacturer or marketer a range of possible shot sizes based on impressions in the shot shell wad individual characteristics gunshot residue fall into two categories the first type is gathered from the suspected shooter's hand with a collection kit the purpose of the examination is to determine if a person has recently handled or fired a weapon since it doesn't determine which firearm was fired or when this testing has limited value and many laboratories have stopped performing these examinations the second time looks for residues on items such as a victim's clothing in an effort to determine the muzzle to target distance many times this type of evidence is not visible to the naked eye and requires microscopic examination and chemical testing to develop the victim's clothing must be handled with care air dried and stored in paper containers in order to provide useful evidence let us now summarize what we have learned in this module firearm have been frequently used in the past and are continuously getting improved in their working the first firearm was introduced by the, by the romans the sport activities of roman resulted in the manufacture of muzzle loading guns and later on breech loading 
uh, fire, firearms weapons like uh, number one is shotgun and rifle, pistols and revolver, submachine and machine guns, improvised firearms.